Hey everyone, Fred Wisson here from P-Town Subby. Um, I want to take a few minutes and talk to you a little bit about the Geese molds that uh, uh, that I've uh, that I've made. Uh, many of you have seen these 3D printed uh, Geese molds that people have been pouring acrylic into. Well, we we're going to go a step further with this. Uh, so I received these molds from Kyle Hobbs and he, uh, he, he was gracious enough to print these for us and instead of just being able to work with the colors of the filament that are available uh, we started talking and determined that it'd be kind of nice to be able to cast any array of colors in this type of mold and then refill it with other colors. So after some discussion he sent us some of these and we came up with what we think is a a pretty good design of a geesey mold that will allow you to to uh, pour your own uh, refillable uh, blank or mold if that's what you want to call it. So what you see here is a direct replica of the actual mold. Um, this was used to, uh, to create this mold. As you can see, the lines in here extremely small. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how you make sure you get full coverage and everything inside of there. So uh, the other thing about this is if I take this mold and I, and I flex it from the bottom, everything kind of opens up and now I'm going to use that to my advantage when I go to pour this blank. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. So just off the camera here that you can't see, I've got some white pearl and I've got uh, Alumilite clear parts A and B uh, that I'm going to use to pour into this mold. Now, I'm using a Lumalite Clear, and I don't recommend using epoxy. Epoxy sticking strength is just so much greater than any of the other resins that it's hard enough to remove these with the Lumalite. I couldn't imagine trying to re remove it with epoxy because epoxy's got such um, such a greater uh, sticking power than uh, than the other resins and it's uh, uh, there's so much surface area to this mold so I'm gonna put a little bit of this white pearl um, in my alumilite and I'm gonna mix it up uh, so that the the mold that I'm pouring um, is gonna be white uh, and then we're gonna take in uh, after this cures we'll demold it and then we're gonna we're going to pour in a, uh, another color and make, uh, make a blank to step you through the whole process. We'll, uh, we'll talk about demolding and uh, talk about pouring. So that's part A. Um, so what I'll go ahead and do now is just take my part B and uh, pour it in and then just start mixing. Um, this is a Lumalite clear slow so I have the time to be able to do this and talk. Uh, this mold takes 20 grams of Alumilite to, to fill. So I've got two parts here A and B um, and I just poured them off screen so that they were easier. Um, so now I'm just going to go ahead and mix and I, I want to make sure I get a good mix because there's not a whole lot of alumilite here to cause that chain reaction once inside the mold so um, heating up the mold is probably not a bad idea however I've cast several of these and never heated the mold and haven't had a problem yet so um, you know it's not necessarily required all right so little bit more 
And as always with a very small pour like this, a little bit of extra B uh, goes a long way. Not a lot, maybe a gram, uh, but that'll all, always help your cure. All right, so now here comes the trick. We're gonna take and we're gonna pour a little bit of this in each of the corners and across the top. And we're just gonna let it sit for a minute and work its way in. You can sit here with a, a stir stick and you know move things around and as you see as I move it you see the resin going down inside of there uh, that's what I'm looking for all right so I want to get the outside of this filled up that's probably about halfway so now I'm gonna take the mold and I'm gonna do what I did earlier and flex it all right when I flex it it opens up and then as it closes all that resin comes out the top of those holes that tells me that the resins all the way down inside of there filling up all those voids so I'm gonna fill this up the rest of the way all right that's about right and I'm gonna do that a couple more times a little bit to this side open that up and as long as I see the resin come out the top right there of those holes I know that that cavity is filled do it the other direction so I'm confident now that those holes are all filled I'm gonna fill this up the rest of the way now I'm just gonna take that and put it in my pressure pot and we'll demold it when it's uh, when it's cured okay everybody we're uh, we're back we put this in the pressure pot overnight it's uh, yeah, that's just the easiest way for me because the aluminum light's slow. Um, takes about four hours to cure. So I cast it last night. Now uh, we just took it out of the pot. Uh, you see, we've got some surface bubbles, but that's not. Uh, there's no issue there. So if you recall, the blank itself has quite a bit of surface area. Right. So here's here's one of the blanks that. Uh, uh, basically that we're gonna pull from this mold there's a ton of surface area there so we're gonna we're gonna have to work this mold back and forth to get this out and I'm gonna show you now how I go about that so the first thing I do is take the ends pull them away so that they they break free of the sides and then I'll take one end and I'm just gonna flex it and I'm going to hear it pop. Right? I don't know if you could hear that or not, but that popping is the silicone breaking free of these little voids right here. Uh, and and you, the mold is now you know, pulled out. So I'm going to go to the other side and do the same thing. We'll see if you can hear it this time. There, there was a little pop. Right? So now I grab the middle of the mold and I squeeze because I want to grab a hold of that silicone and then I just start working it back and forth left and right. All right and just kind of slowly work it out you can see how it's coming out now working it left and right and there we go it's pulled out so it's that simple that's uh, that's all there is to demolding these things uh, you just have to be careful slow and uh, you know don't over, don't uh, overpower it I'm looking here I don't see any voids down in there, so it was a successful cast. So I'm going to set the mold aside, and I've got here off the screen some uh, Caster's Choice Black Pearl mixed in a part A, and I have a part B of Alumalite. So what I want to do is I'm going to take and mix up uh, some Alumalite, put that in here. This is the joy of it. Now you can put any colors you want. Um, you want to do a type of flip cup pour, multiple pours inside. Well, I'm just going to make this one white with black. Kind of look, kind of an elegant, you know, uh, tuxedo type uh, thing with all the small white lines in it. And uh, we're going to see what that looks like after I demold it. So what I'm going to do is I just made this mold out of Caster's Choice White Pearl. Demolded it. Now I'm going to fill it with black. See what we, uh, see what it looks like. So, I already mixed the uh, 
the black pearl into part A. Now this is part B going in right now. So the reason I had uh, bubbles on the top of mine that I just demolded there is I keep my alumalite in the refrigerator. It, uh, the alumalite that I'm currently working with is, I don't know, um, a year old. And uh, the, the refrigerator is a humidity-free environment. It, uh, part B has not gelled at all. And uh, usually part B will start gelling in a humid environment. So um, if I keep it in the fridge, I pull it out right before I cast. Um, I usually try to pull it out, you know, an hour, 30 minutes before I cast and let it warm up a little bit. Um, but, uh, you know, it, uh, it was pretty cold when I casted it yesterday. So now that we're, uh, we're mixing up A and B of this slow, and again, um, and the other benefit of putting Alumalite in the refrigerator, especially during the summer, is uh, it, it takes it further away from its, um, from its flashover point or its uh, curing point. Uh, the Alumalite regular that has seven minutes uh, working time, I can get almost, uh, I don't know, 12, 14 minutes of work time with it by putting it uh, in the fridge. And, uh, you know, if it's cold, if it's cold, it's further away from its curing point, so it takes longer to get there. So that's just a little tidbit for you guys that cast in the summer in really warm areas. All right, so I think we're mixed well enough there. So now all I'm going to do is uh, start filling these cavities. So just slowly pour into each one. Fill them up. Try not to overflow the mold like I just did there. So there we go. We got a full mold. Now I'm just going to pop this in the pressure pot, and I'll uh, I'll show you guys after it's out what. Uh, what it looks like. 